Ivan Drago. That guy's cool. Uh, he's huge. He's got big muscles. He can kill you with a one punch, and he lost to America. I must break you. He did kill Apollo Creed, though, so that's pretty based. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> Very controversial. <laughs> it's exhausting. Yeah. I don't want it's to just... deal with it. No, and we. This should be about being creative and making the best possible product, not drama farming. You know, yeah. I mean, I get it. You you may you, 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 the drama makes money. It's the same fucking reason that reality TV is so goddamn popular. The only problem is mm -hmm. that I really like drama. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have a, a show called Russian Troll Factory, so I mean. See, Kami Mark is like the Monty Python of fucking drama. Огонь на подавление! Сзади по левому флангу! Огонь! Прочь! Они... Salam alaikum bitches, it's me, Iman, call me Mark, your friendly neighborhood communist. Welcome to uh, another episode of Russian Troll Factory. Uh, joining me, uh, as ever, uh, the comrade of the revolution. Hello, it's virtual stencil artist Yan. Uh, yeah, Yan's not really here, so uh, we're going to use the virtual Yan instead. Hello, Mark. Hello. Uh, and of course, uh, we're joined by famous uh, British pop star and Doctor Who sidekick. Uh, it's Billy Piper. Hello. Welcome <laughs> nice. to the show, guys. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, so uh, no Yan this week uh, for reasons. So uh, Piper, the responsibility to perform Yan's poem has fallen to you. This week, how does that feel? You're intimidated by the pressure, like uh, you know, Jan really delivers a masterpiece every week. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize I was on camera yet. Sorry. Hello. Yeah, I was waiting for you to notice. What up? I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You missed it. Our introduction was glorious. Billy, and Billy Piper. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. That's why I thought it was. Uh, I'm sorry. I a, totally fucked that up. Recycle. I recycled that joke from the green room before the show, and it like because uh, that's the thing I always do. If you say something funny in the green room, I'm gonna steal it. Uh, Kenzo was the one who put that together. Steal it much on. Uh, it's not really stealing. I'm appropriating your jokes. Oh, like, okay. uh, you know, and redistributing Repurposing them for the people. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's you got it. You understand. Uh, and we have a, a special guest this week as well. Like, uh, we've got a whole bunch of talking points to talk about or whatever. Uh, but before we get to that, let's have a quick check in with the with the bots in the chat or whatever. Uh, Vasson is here. He says, late. And hetero flexible, like um, yeah, late cool. hetero flexible. Like uh, you can be as hetero flexible as you like here, like uh, last summer. I don't know. Uh, uh the pandaverse. Yeah, welcome. Uh, Vasen says the Soviet mark theme is awesome. Thanks. I've been learning to play it on. So uh, a few years ago. There was a, a series of events that unfolded that ended with me and a cousin, and we were standing in front of a church organ in an abandoned, not an abandoned church, an empty church, and it, like, uh, you know, after a service, like, but it was still open. Uh, and, like, I really wanted to play something, like, in that moment, so I... I've gone out of my way to learn to play the Soviet anthem like uh, the next time because you know it's a it's a it's, it a, it's a catchy anthem like I mean it's pretty epic yeah it's it's a banger like yeah. uh, there's a great thing that I like watching on YouTube which is in on the occasional times when you know at the Olympics or at a sports event or whatever when they play the Soviet anthem instead of the Russian anthem, like uh, it's got the same music, but the words are different. Like uh, in the Soviet version, you know, um, there's a line. Uh, yeah, the line is with Stalin, our leader, with faith in the people, like, uh, and you know, uh, where great Lenin led us, like, there's all these lines in there, and it's like. Uh, <laughs> And it's funny to watch them play it like at a hockey match or whatever. And all of the Russian people know in it, like, shit, this is the wrong one where it's going to talk about the war and stuff. Uh, but to the Canadians or whatever, like, they have no idea because they don't speak Russian in it. Like, it's, right. I like, mean, you compare, you compare that one to, like, the Canadian one, and it's like, whew, it's like, it's like a Cracker Jack box versus, like, you know, like like high art, you know, like I've never liked the Canadian national anthem. I'm like, man, this is boring. Very which one, which one, which one do they play for great Britain? Cause we, we don't technically have a national anthem, right? Uh, I don't know. God said the queen is the, obvious. Well, that's, that's the English national anthem. Yeah. I don't that's really it. know. <laughs> or care. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, there's only one anthem I want playing, like, uh, and that's our one. Uh, Mr. Solomon says, "Hey all, uh, Paulus Arts, hey all." Kenzo says, uh, "Paulus says, Kenzo looking good today." Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> my representation. Like, uh, Schnelli Zai says, "Hello, darlings. Hello to you." Uh, Jimmy Godfrey says Friday's highlight used to be eight pints and a kebab. Now it's Troll Factory. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, that's a point. We need to think of a troll to do this week. Like, uh, hopefully, we'll think of some. I haven't I forgot to. Easy. Uh, uh, Sherry is here as well. She says hello. I'm literally. Hey, Sherry. <laughs> Katie did for $2. Thank you very much. All hail, Kami Mark. Much love. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, yeah. Those people show that. Cool. Uh, well, we should do another CG UK show, show soon. That's a thing. All right. Uh, I've made him wait in the back long enough. Uh, the first guest uh, this week uh, who has incidentally been uh, pissing off some Ripper people today on uh, Twitter. A complete coincidence, I'm sure. Uh, we're joined by uh, Von Klaus. Hello. Hello, hello. 
Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me on to uh, <laughs> get trash and there's some, yeah, the detractors are in the house. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. It's time to laugh at this shit way more, guys. It's time to stop taking it so seriously. Trust me, you'll have more fun. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Much love. Uh, Vasa says, Von Klauster, surprised to see you. Yeah. It's been ages since we've done a show together, like uh, at no least point. a year. Like I had a couple of months off from streaming like at the end of last year when I was like, oh, there's nothing that I want to talk about. Now there's loads of stuff to talk about. I know. <laughs> I know. we got to get it out. we got to talk, Mark. We should uh -huh. be talking more like, often. But I'm um, like... This channel, like, uh, I, I'm not opposed to dishing out drama. Like, if you watch my channel, I do that. Like, uh, but I don't want that to be the whole channel in it. So, like, in it's been six weeks since we last even talked about the Ripperverse. I mean, sure, we might have made, like, sly digs in other videos. But, you know, uh, if you're only here and you're watching because you like seeing people dunk on Eric July, come uh and watch when we dunk on mi5 and when we dunk on the media like uh and the other alphabet agencies and the sjw's and the corporations like uh, there's loads of people to dunk on and they uh, it. they're all right. twats yeah. Yeah. yeah jolly green is here he says hey y'all uh bonnie's being a bad boy on twitter yeah, mm. spoke my mind. <laughs> it's equal <laughs> opportunity true. dunking, you know. I mean, because like dunking the same person again and again can just get old and boring, and then you know, it's like. No, uh -huh. I mean, yeah. for me, it's like you cross a certain line, and I'm just like, no, like I I make a special point to not lie to my customers, and if I think someone is, I might call that out. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things where it's like. I don't know. It matters to me in terms of comic business, in terms of winning over people and for what we're doing. And so, yeah, um, it's weird, too, because what I'm getting what everyone's freaking out about is I was like, Yaira's clearly been redrawn and uh, you clearly pushed it back to be able to redraw it. And there's nothing wrong with it because that means a higher quality book, which is a good thing, which is what you want. Uh -huh business-wise, and everyone's freaking out. They're like, books aren't late from rip -off It's like, guys, relax. <laughs> um, I'm not, I don't care if they pushed it back. I think it was the right move. I'm telling them they did the right thing, but for some reason, it's like this big cover-up that it was redrawn. Yeah, why are they it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, there was, there was this, even... This, this, if I may, Billy, this mm -hmm. was a perfect opportunity for Eric July to say, look at how well I take criticisms, like, I heard what the fans said, and I, I looked in my heart, and I was like, you know what, they're right. They're, yeah. they're definitely, certainly right. Like, uh, he uses definitely and certainly as qualifiers all the time, like uh, like he's trying mm -hmm. to convince himself. Uh, yeah, if he had just said, like, uh, you, you guys were right, like, and I fixed it, like, I took an extra three months or whatever, we'd all say, woo we wouldn't. We'd say, uh, why, why are you pushing it back for? Like, uh, but, I, I, like, I pulled uh, art wait, off of the on, campaign... Wait, wait, Okay. Go on, go ahead. I said I pulled can art off the campaign page the very first day when it first hit a million dollars, and there were critiques that I had on the artwork even on day one. And then when I went to go tell a friend about them the next day, I brought and then you know just deleted them off my desktop. And then the next day went to the campaign to to show somebody like some of the inconsistencies that I found, and uh, they were fixed the next day. And, uh, Which I is good, see, isn't it? That's a it I think it's like, I think I think that's a good thing. But the fact that it wasn't addressed, that like you know that the just like how both you guys were saying that the critique was taken, that things were fixed, they move forward. I think should have been should have been highlighted. Mm -hmm. So like, his uh, persona well, is guy who's always right, and that's mm -hmm. what he thinks he opens your wallet with. He knows better than you. He's Eric July. He's wiser than you. He knows better. He just knows business better than you guys. Stop it. Just give him your money. He's wiser, so he can't ever just be like, you know what, you guys were right. I'm adjusting, which everyone would cheer on and be totally cool with. No one would hate on him for it. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh, I missed that. I, I I didn't see that right there. Thank you for pointing that out. 
it's going to get fixed. And the only right. comment he's made is, no, this is her work, you know. And he, he, even if it was her that has adjusted it, he could just say that, you know, like, oh, it uh -huh. is her that's well, kind that's, of coming. And... That's exactly what you would expect, isn't mm -hmm. it? Uh, one, one further Who thing. have we got on the show today? <laughs> uh, Ryan Rajate is also with us now. Yeah. Hello! I have Hello. a drawing of my own show. It's of a black man, but it's not of Eric July. As you all know, I have great relations with, with black people. It's Atreus. I drew Atreus. Kenzo may know who he is, but uh, yes, this is my art style. Uh, I drew it a few days ago, so there is some damage. It's on a whiteboard, but uh, I thought since we were talking about a, a prominent black creator, I'd mention one of their brothers. But uh, it's great to be here. It's been a while since I've uh, been on. It's nice to yeah. see Piper. Piper's lovely, especially her singing. Um, I'm not aware of not aware of these two fine gentlemen. Uh, it's good to see Kenzo is dressed up as Eric July, and it's great, <laughs> to, be it's great to be back on. Uh... No. <laughs> and it's great to be back on uh, Kami Mark's show. So I hope you're all doing well. Uh -huh. yeah, like uh, Ryan was on the first episode of Comic Cast that that um, Drago clip comes from, um, and I was trying to think of the last time we did a live show before that. It might have been the Nerdet EFAP, like uh, oh, it might have yes, been yeah. that long ago. Uh, but so when Yan dropped out this week, like uh, for mm -hmm. reasons not going to all other reasons, uh, and then he did another six guy. Uh, I thought, oh, what about if you put an R in front of Jan? Get right out of there. <laughs> uh, no, really, uh, I brought you up Ryan because he's a person that's been on the show before that's called mm -hmm. like the like, uh, but is has uh, the opposite opinion to us, and it like uh, that is mm -hmm. uh, or on the supporting ripper side of mm -hmm. the. Argument and anyway. this is totally uh, fucking up my echo it? chamber, man. I don't know how I feel yeah. about this. <laughs> hey, I'm in a very uncomfortable position. I'm actually defending a black man's work. This is this oh is very God. uncharted <laughs> territory for me. I usually <laughs> criticize Atreus all the time. We both recognize the 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 difficulties with his uh, community. But uh, I see it from the perspective of a of a content creator. I'm not a comment creator just look at my damn artwork uh, as an example for that and i'm not financially based that's why i call myself reality based mm. but that's why i appreciate you know both perspectives and that's why i love it when kenzo's on reality based he can provide that perspective although that's right i'm the kenzo. opposite i am completely I jealous of eric d july's success i'm jealous that he's made money and i just don't want to see a black man succeed in an american comics well, I, I will say, Kenza, I never, I never realized I rubbed off so well on you for you to to have a profile picture like that. But it's it's great to be here, and as someone, who, where is it? Oh, well, as someone who has only ever read two comic books, and they're both by Ethan Van Skyver, I can I can tell you that from what I have seen from uh, Eric July and the the Ripperverts. He's certainly done very well financially. But if you ask me the question, what's my favorite part? I really, I cannot answer that question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, Hands up, you don't should, shoot. You should, uh, if that's the only two books that you have read, then mm -hmm. I recommend that you go over to fundmycomic.com and uh, get a copy of Kim Il Sung and Best Career, the 2024 anniversary edition. Uh, we got two brand new covers and it like for this run. Uh, we got the shades cover, which is just the original cover, but with shades on. Like, uh, right now, this is the rarest cover that there is. Like, uh, you know, it's sort of one copy or something. Uh, and then we've got the Pearl Harbor variant and it like, uh, that's come on. You show that to your American grandpa, he's gonna have a heart attack. Like, uh, that's incredible. Also, like, uh, I recommend just for 12 US dollars grabbing the Schrodinger's Invisible variant, like, uh, and get your hands on 
an invisible comic book. There's a whole bunch of stuff. This whole campaign is very funny. The book's very funny. Like it's written like the book. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about this week. The launch of Yaira, like, and the success of the Ripperverse or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about the Super Soaker Sisters. Like, oh, uh, what they, you know. <laughs> they look uh, fucking scary. Let's just face it. They both look fucking terrifying. They, they certainly do. Uh, uh, we're going to... We're, we're going to do a, uh, a wild cast uh, the Hollywood movies of the Ripperverse on it. Like, I've already taken the liberty here of doing two of them. We'll come back to that, though. That's the thing. Uh, my, my poor Brie. Why did you do that to her? I knew that would upset Billy. That's one of the reasons. <laughs> <for it. laughs> I'm the Brie defender here. Ironically. Oh. I, I couldn't. After seeing, after seeing a picture of her feet, I can't. I can't do it. I, I, Girl, I, clean your toes. Ugh. I like to defend I like to defend Bree just because I like the feeling that it that it arises in other people, like in the in the discussions that I get into with people. So it's 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 purely from my own like you know devious ends. Like, <laughs> oh, Dad, who puts their fucking toe cheese on full display on the red carpet, Bree? Come on. Mm, well, some people like that. <laughs> oh, I don't. Um, I don't. I'm just saying. Some people. Like. Some people. There's something out there for everyone. Uh, yeah, what you just said, Vasum. Going back. Uh, <laughs> I had a moment. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I was gonna say. Oh, someone. Someone went to Party America today. Like, get some supplies. I feel like partying right now. Yeah. That's that's the. I like the the is the, well. it's the down yeah. one the rain the rain the thunderstorm I don't, I don't I don't know nope nope those are very big thumbs <laughs> are you I coming on to him I'm, no <laughs> there we go I've never had I've never had anyone tell me that before but okay <laughs> what big thumbs you have sir mm. the better to uh, have Magnificent Devil says Kiwi farmers are gossipy old women in man babies' bodies. <laughs> hey, I'm a Kiwi farmer. Leave me alone. I, uh, I, Richie yeah, Dupas here. They used here to go after on... the right people. They used to go after the lame people. Now they're like defending weird. It's weird, dude. They're like they lost. They uh, it was always like that. You was just looking in the wrong thread. Like, uh, <laughs> there's like every position is counter argued. Like somewhere else, like it's. Uh, yeah. It gets not like a really right wing reputation, but it's, I don't think that that's true. Like, uh, Do, just... does triple P stand for pig, pig, and pig? Because it looks like one. <laughs> it could do. I don't know. Uh, Paulus is agreeing with uh, what Von was saying uh, about mm -hmm. ten minutes ago. Like uh, hiring an art director was a good thing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you got. Uh, Bajillions of dollars, bro. Like, uh, use it. What, what, what does it? What, what does that like job entail exactly? Um, it's in the name, Kenzo. What you direct art? art. Mm. Okay. It's in the name. Mm. Uh, Jabba says I'm here to make what I leave the comic Mark channel. Well, get uh, to work, dude. <laughs> Stop slacking. Mm. Yeah, our director's like our director's like middle management. You know, it's like a lot of people when they get promoted to that position, they honestly don't like it. At least in the corporate world, anyway, because like you don't actually get to create a lot anymore when you get put into the art director position. You're just that sounds um, so relaxing. Yeah, <laughs> you're just basically wrangling cats to keep them going into a certain direction, almost to keep a vision of sorts yeah. like on track. Mm -hmm. You know you know it's like a lot of pointing other artists below you like to style guides and and model sheets and stuff like that you know okay uh, so it'd be like um in animation like when you submit your work to the lead animator and he'll be like right and these eyes need to be smaller make right. this cheat like that kind of thing yep yeah yep. Yep. Okay. yep the color palette you're using isn't anything that we've used yet before in this like you need to like look at these visual dev like you know slides like you know, keyframes and like 
keep daytime to this, keep nighttime yeah, yeah. to this, this other thing that you're doing. It's not that it's not bad. It's just not consistent with the other, what we're doing. I swear, Ooh. playing art director to the colorist. Oh God, dude. <laughs> I don't know what it is about. Here's the color palette we gave you. Where are you getting these colors from? I had to do that so much on books where I'm like, why did their clothes change color? Why are those colors none of the colors that we gave you? What is happening right now? Well, and then there's the opposite. Like, so what color is this guy's hair? And you just get, I don't, I don't know. I just. I mean, it. that's true. I'm sure they got to work with. Uh, they're blonde. Well, well, so, so he would be in charge of like a continuity of the look of the characters. Then I guess and. From, from what that I was see, part of it, yeah. That would be like, part of it, yeah. he's probably not in charge of the promotional work then because like no. Yaira looks completely different in all of the <laughs> the ones so far, I guess. But I think but it's a shame. She can morph yeah. into different variants of womanhood. <laughs> yes. Well, you would want to have like obviously like a, a, a very talented artist as your art director, which they <laughs> do, but I kind of feel like they're wasting him if that's the position they're just having him in because he is a good artist. He's like he might be too expensive. Expensive for even them to afford to just do all the yeah, art. Surely not married. <laughs> no, no, like it's no, Kanan, Kanan doesn't like to do interiors. He's wanting the break. Mm. Likes he likes that big fat cover paycheck, which a lot of good artists like him kind of get into that career later. You know, a little later mm. after doing a lot of interiors for a while. And um, so I, but I do think I think he helped draw Yaira. <laughs> I think he's getting. Oh. I think he helped redraw the whole freaking thing. I think um, he's getting to draw. Well, and, and and kind of to what Vaughn is saying, like there are world class artists out there, like literally that have worked on some of the biggest properties that you know that we can think of. You know, stuff from like you know the Terminator or you know Star Wars or Predator or stuff like that. That um that don't actually enjoy sequential storytelling. I mean, it, it, it's not what it's it it's taxing to them to to do that. You know, because it's a totally different skill but if it's just like drawing and painting amazing characters or key shots of like it would be considered like akin to like doing a cover or something like that they completely excel at but they don't want to do the minutia of thinking of all the different camera angles how they might lay out together it's it's really two different skill sets that's why i've always suggested to a lot of people like don't always rely on the person that you want to draw your comic to be the same person that that creates the characters because they're really two different disciplines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah like uh one of the things that i did in the krishna kid universe is like uh all the different kingdoms you know like uh, i wanted them to have their own distinct cultures in it like uh, almost like in star wars or something how you know every planet has its own architecture and their own fashions and whatever uh and one of the ways that i ensured that they felt distinct from each other was to have different artists design like the characters from the different kingdoms and stuff like that was my logic oh. uh i did want to answer this question from uh <laughs> I, knew, I knew that was going to come up <laughs> mark are you an actual comic like uh yeah is the short answer like uh i am also like a satirist like uh, and i'm being funny like um i'll like push uh they always say uh mark is a 10 communist and common mark is just dialed to 11 communist mm -hmm. it's like your I... wwe character you're a larger than life version of yourself like vince mcmahon for example <laughs> yeah like uh I, sure i would never ever actually guillotine someone like uh oh we gained a subscriber who is it hello uh thank you xbox gamer 389 for subscribing um yeah so we haven't even i haven't even got to the notes part like uh at the start of the show like i always like uh make some notes of things that happen during the week like to share mm -hmm. uh, like uh, you know to get us warmed up while waiting for the audience or whatever uh so one of the things that i wanted to talk about that's very important to me uh, is here in the UK, like uh, the government just uh, redefined <laughs> extremism, like uh, as part. I'm of going to jail, folks. It's oh. over. Reality based is being sent to prison. 
Oh, we're gonna be fucking cellmates. Thank you, Christian Moses Holtz, for subscribing. Uh, yeah, so they've redefined it like uh, this is part of the online safety bill, like that they're gonna use to crush us. Like, uh, so there's just some parts of it that I wanted to show you, like, uh, and get your thoughts on. Uh, blah 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 blah. Here it is the definition, yeah. So uh, extremism is the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on violence, hatred, or intolerance. So I don't have any of those, I don't think. Uh, but then it gets a bit dicey, like uh, negating or destroying the fundamental freedoms of others. Uh, this is the big one for me. Undermine, overturn, or replace the UK system of liberal parliamentary democracy and democratic rights. Like, we talk about that every week. Like, uh, that's like the crux of my yeah. show. Yeah, uh, liberal. <laughs> and liberal. That's like saying for, for Americans out there, that's like saying you can't replace the Democrats in, in your system. They've literally put it into our legal system now that a political ideology has to be pr protected. In their case, liberalism, which is the center ground of, of politics, according to these establishment wankers. We're so, protecting so. democracy <laughs> by not allowing you to choose like what you want. <laughs> We're protecting the sanctity of democracy by telling you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and just Their listen. democracy, though. Yeah. Liberal democracy. My uh. democracy. The, uh, <laughs> the, the capitalists, the corporations already have socialism and we should have it too. Uh, so here's some behaviors that could constitute extremism. Ooh, this is going to uh, be good. <laughs> using, threatening, inciting, justifying, glorifying, or excusing violence towards a group in order to dissuade them from using their legally defined rights and freedoms. Uh, now, I joke about the guillotine every single <laughs> week. <laughs> Just like, like I joke about the lamppost and the rope. Uh huh. Yeah, so uh, you bring me to another point. Let me find oh. the one. Uh, is there rope in this legislation? Look at this part of it is providing an uncritical platform for individuals or representatives of groups or organizations uh, demonstrated. This kind of behavior. Basically, every time that you say something like that now, I'm legally obligated to say, well, actually, like, uh, that's not a. Like, uh, there's. So, 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 according to this legislation, Kami Mark, yeah. I cannot say tranny demon? Because that's like a red line for me. Apparently not. Uh, outrageous, isn't it? Uh, it's and how detailed and long this is, it's still going. Like, yeah, it's like that, that's thing or another. Yeah, that's British legislation to to a T. They literally give you so much that you can't read it. Like, if a, for an, I'm amazed an American can read all this. The but, fact I'm well, amazed you, to, you guys can read. <laughs> what, you have, what you have to remember is this kind of legislation is brought in under the guise of this is about islamic terror like uh when it's not like uh we think like oh yeah we should stop uh men with beards and hooks for hands like radicalizing 15 year olds but it's not really about that it's about going after anyone who disagrees and it like uh once they've built the precedent like they can fucking do whatever they want uh that's a bit or once, the, once, they, once they build the president, then they can apply it in only one direction, is the sad part. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm 24, oh. by the way, not 44. <laughs> I, I, no, nobody <laughs> believes that. I do, and the truth is reality-based. That's my catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> Please bring it here. Uh, oh, okay. He was talking about Jabba. Uh, here we go. Uh, it's funny how the Friday Night Tights crew show such disdain for crappy mainstream entertainment yet pretend to give the Yoira trailer a pass. Hmm? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I thought I uh, can't resist this fight, like uh, yeah. in the, the current ongoing dramas, like uh, mm -hmm. the. 
there's such a demonstration of hypocrisy like on show from the friday night tights people mm -hmm. like uh you know failing to do the very thing that they've built their careers on is like oh mm -hmm. and then you combine that with eric's like refusal to listen to the customers like oh, sure. Sure. uh so other things that happened to me this week so oh. uh a quick question um for the panel what is the most amount of money in cash that you've ever had in your hands like that you had to transport from one location to another do you know what i mean like uh, so you yeah had something in the are world. you trying to rob us kami i'm not admitting to any criminality on this screen man what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> I, I, he's, a let me he's a plant uh, ladies all, and gentlemen all of you uh have had that experience and regardless of how much money you've ever had like uh the most money like at some point you've walked around with a big what of money like uh, and the point is that in that moment yeah like uh you are hypersensitive and aware like that you could be robbed like because you have this money on you and you your brain plays this trick on you that it tells you like you have this increased probability of being robbed because now i have ten thousand pounds in cash on me or whatever mm -hmm. like uh, and in the moment you tell yourself like uh nobody knows that I've got this big block of cash in my bag or in my pocket or whatever. Like, if I'm just cool, nobody will know. So the other day, I was coming out of the shop, yeah, and I saw this man walk past me very fast. And he was holding, like, a, a leather camera bag, you know, like, uh, sort of about this size. And he was holding it, like, clutched to his uh, breast uh, and, like, walking faster than me like and i walk faster and the second i saw him i thought that guy's carrying loads of money like uh in like I, it, it's radiating off of him like uh, and i watched him like walk through the car park and then into the bank in it and i thought ah oh, i could have robbed that dude like uh, yeah. i know for a fact that he was carrying big money on him mm. How typical of a communist you can literally sense cash on people. <laughs> yeah, that's my uh that's detect bourgeoisie. That's one of my uh powers. Like uh, mm. I can just do that. But you fail um, robbing them uh, like other communists do. Should have robbed them. Mm. Next time I will. Bank, yeah. man. You know his route now. You know his route. Well, considering <laughs> you're a communist, Mark, I'm amazed you didn't eat him. That's they have been they have been known so to that, do that. That's Haitians, right? Them too. <laughs> yes, their political persuasion. Vaughn, your audio that. is so low. Is it too low? All right. Yeah, or maybe you just aren't talking then, close enough for the microphone. This, how's, I'm turning it up. How's that? Is my new mic there, it's being there weird? There we go. There we go. Yes. That's better? That's better. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah, guys. I, Sorry about that. I won this microphone on a, like a stream game show. And uh, yeah, I, I did not answer any of the questions. My yeah, team this, uh, this microphone awesome. isn't even plugged in. Like, I just like to talk into it. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't afford the connector. <laughs> Doing karaoke at home, man. Mm. You can't see me in the back room. I'm singing the Soviet national anthem, like at the top of the show. <laughs> um, but, but, but. All right, here's another interesting thing that I learned. Like, uh, what I'm about to show you uh, mm -hmm. is a map of the global distribution of rats around the world. I mean, wow. like, obviously, like, uh, you understand these Arctic areas at the top where it's just bare snow and that, no rats, mm -hmm. there's no like scavenging human oh, I, thought, I, I thought you said i thought you said rap oh. <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I thought that too kenzo but not no, the people who do it yeah you must bring a rap to antarctica i know it turns out antarctica is not a fan of biggie <laughs> <laughs> it's real white there man real white place real white uh, white folks. bears white everything the Great Replacement really has gotten out of hand, doesn't it? Wait, so what's that little pocket that's like where Canada okay. is? Well, right? where they want a battle. The, the rats are thanks like, no. for bring, Thanks for bringing us back onto the topic, Billy. So that yeah. is the state of Alberta 
in Canada, yeah. And the reason that they don't have any rats is that when the British colonized that area, uh, in that particular state, they put out like a reward. You know, you hand in uh, one dead rat, we'll give you one dollar or whatever. Uh, and the people, you know, they went mental, went around, killed all the rats and it like and handed them in to get their checks. Well, they worked perfect. You can see even now today, no rats there. Right? So the rats are just too scared to cross like the state line. No, they know. <laughs> <laughs> Little rat skulls just, just. <laughs> they they were the middle of the board. Them. Rose you put them on little pikes. I, I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like they come into Barter Town. Yeah, they see the little yes. pikes with the rat skulls. And they're like, oh yeah, fuck this place. <laughs> no, no, we're not. This is where we don't go. <laughs> this, this is why. This is why the state of Alberta will never be part of the United States because those guys are smart enough to give you Americans ideas, and we really don't want that now, do we? I well, imagine that. I imagine they haven't got many Venezuelans in Alberta either. Mm. <laughs> Oh, Virtue Comics with the minor correction that it's a province. Okay. A province so, of anyway. these nuts. Moving on. <laughs> Somebody actually um, beat me to a these uh, nuts joke. That's crazy. The, ah. <laughs> the reason what the reason that I'm sharing this rat map thing with you uh, mm. is not the effectiveness of its ability to remove rats from Alba. So uh the british saw this and thought that's great like uh as a tactic so then when we colonized india like and made the british raj or whatever it was like fuck there's so many king cobras around like um uh, <laughs> oh, the yes. shit. so there's like our uh indian people bring us a king cobra a dead king cobra i'll give you a dollar or whatever they start uh, them. and the Indians, because they're smarter, uh, <laughs> started breeding king cobras and, it, yeah. like, uh, and killing them as babies, like and collecting their checks. Like, and now there's more king cobras in the area than there ever was before. <laughs> I love that. So fun. yeah, because it's even worse is when uh, like it caught they caught on and they were like, well, okay, we're not gonna pay for the cobras anymore. Would they they just let them loose? They were like, "Oh, there's not worth anything anymore. We're just gonna let them loose." Mm. <laughs> right, not even that. gonna bother killing them. Just they should have just given the contracts to British citizens. None of the um, whatever they called occupy. No, not occupiers. Um, servants. That that's what I'll use. I can't think of another word for them. Colonial. Yeah, like, yeah, give the contracts only to the colonials. That way, if an Indian did it, nope, doesn't work for me, brother. You're not getting your paycheck. You're not one of us. See, that would have solved it. I mean, now uh, they solved it with song. They play songs and hypnotize oh. them and everything's cool. Uh, oh, this is... Uh, Peaceful. Going, going back, uh, best career, like, uh, and Krishna Kid, of course, if you'd like. Krishna Kid is... Uh, Pretty close. Um, hang on. So this book, uh, by my maths, needs eight backers. Eight backers, and it'll be funded. Like uh, mm -hmm. it's only a five hundred dollar target. Dollars, not even pounds. Like uh, five hundred dollars, real low. Like uh, very easy to uh, surpass. But I oh, just wanted to show you uh, that they've got like uh, the sample of Krishna Kid One in it. Like, uh, it's only a third of Krishna Kid, but it's now double the original size that I promised at 60 pages instead of 30 pages. Like, uh, Ooh. now if you back that gold one, like, uh, it's going to be 180 pages. Like, I had to double the page count, like, on the book to make it, uh, better. Ooh. It was too, like, pressed. You know, like, there wasn't enough, uh, space for the characters to like express themselves like uh and uh well krishna is awesome like uh he's a bit of a mary sue uh and it's his relationship with the other characters like uh where the drama comes from in it like, but what i, else? Can't, I, can't, I can't wait i can't wait for the book that has 69 pages on it called kami marks kama sutra 
a guide to sexual comic creation. Well, one day I am going to do a book called 99 Pages of Dicks, like uh, just draw a dick. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like a Joe Glass book. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say right. uh, 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 the sexual guide to, to commie creation. <laughs> eh, well, he is a comic creator, so you got to all hang together, otherwise you'll all be hanged separately, either by the establishment or by fellow creators, given how cutthroat uh, comics is. Or is that a taboo yeah. to say to comic creators? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I was reading the chat. I didn't even hear what you said. What did you say? Oh. <laughs> That's not very you nice, Comic. Indie comics is cutthroat. Oh, it's I mean, is. Yeah, I think it certainly can be. Mm -hmm. I think right now, in general, the heat's been turned up on mm -hmm. everyone on the planet mm -hmm. by the elites, and everyone's pissed off and fed up, and everyone's telling everyone to fuck off. And um, so it's kind of... I don't know. It's a situation of like, let's not like let the fighting get to us mm -hmm. too much. But yeah, cut, I mean, I've seen people screw each other on deals. I've seen that type of cutthroat mm -hmm. behavior where people use people for art or not pay stuff like that's happened to me a lot. Um, but in general, when it comes to my people, my fans, like what's going on in Comics Gate, like mm -hmm. I'm having a damn good time. I'm making the best books with the best artists in the world. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, division has happened with Ripperverse for sure, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's not take it too seriously, guys. It's funny. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. do, do not be mistaken into thinking uh, it's about hate. I mean, it's about love. Yeah. Like, uh, we think that this is right. funny. Like, uh, <clears throat> you know, funny that you can be a, the CEO of a multi million dollar company and still uh churn out the same level of uh quality consistently <laughs> sounds like something i would do what what's the what's the uh phrase goes like sometimes you live long enough to uh become the monster that you uh complained about or whatever uh -huh. uh, yeah. what the green goblin said in the sam raimi spider-man <laughs> yeah I'm like, diet yeah. Die a hero or live long enough to be a vid villain. I think that comes from the yeah 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 trilogy. totally mm. comes from yeah and I'm sure maybe it was even said before that but yeah mm. like that's uh that that's kind of what I'm thinking because like that's I just said it in chat too like it that's what it feels like to me like a lot of this rip reverse stuff is is from my perspective he's making millions of of dollars mm -hmm. yet the quality of what we're seeing in my opinion, and art is subjective, um, isn't any better than other comic book campaigns that I see mm -hmm. make sub 20K. Uh -huh. um, Which there it proves, I will say, Kami, in response to that, it proves the old saying. It's not what you know, it's who you know. True. Uh -huh. uh... I, could, I could talk a little bit about it. I don't have a problem with, like, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. If he came in and was like, hey, guys, I might, I'm pretty new to this, but I got a song on my heart and I want to tell the best stories in the world. Will you help me? You know, I'm going to make mistakes along the way. He would have so much more support, love, nothing but love, nothing but, you know, greatness. It would be, you know, other artists would be helping him more. And we were at first, a lot of us, you know, uh -huh. uh, a lot of people did great covers for him. And a lot of people said the book was good and went easy on it for him to do him a favor when we knew it wasn't, you know, great. But you hoped that things would improve, that there would be a vision that included a good product. But he started fighting on that. And st over time, he lost me. It took, like, time of chiseling away of my goodwill. You know what I mean? Where I kept mm -hmm. watching this. And I was like, oh, I kind of don't really agree with that. Oh, why is he saying that? Why? You know? And before I knew it, I was like, this guy's not being honest. This guy's... Um, he he's creating division by not being able to accept that his books could use a lot of improvement and that he should have better standards for them. He doesn't get stuff like that. He's not into making comics or art. He's into the business mm -hmm. in which he's told us a million times over. So it's, I don't know. It's really been interesting to watch. I'm a guy. I make comics. I run my own business. 
So I'm, you know, trying to learn things and pick up things all the time. He's really successful. That's great. He built up his YouTube. But the key to success is to make good story and art that people come back for. This is the storytelling business. It's not just business. This is this is something else that he's gotten himself into. So it's like he can't admit he's wrong ever. And it just becomes this – everything becomes a dramatic thing. And that's kind of made any comics, you know, a little uh, rambunctious but, lately. Uh, yeah. it, it's, very, it's very easy to support like a – an underdog character in it like uh and he is not presenting himself in that way or like uh, is saying i am the the best winner of everything like uh and uh, don't say that like uh because people are gonna pick you apart if you do say that well, like, that's why uh, that's why i brought up that axiom of the become the villain because it's like he very much from my opinion from what i see of what he puts out to the public he's very much taken the stance of like what a lot of the executives at Disney at Warner brothers do, you know, it's like, no, this is, this is the right thing that I'm doing. And I'm, and it, it's not really about the, the passion that I'm trying to put into this. Look how many millions of dollars I've made, not look at this beautiful thing that I've created. Hmm. And it's, uh, there's a dissonance there for me. Uh -huh. Well, financially, well, a financially based argument versus a, a quality based argument that's what i uh, boil the whole division down to um, and and it just goes to show what happens when content creation and comic creation clash because you, you see eric july a, a prominent content creator who has peaked in terms of growth at around the half a million mark on youtube who has built this uh, business uh, around him and has entered the foray into comic creation and I can I can also understand a lot of comic creators being a little bit pissed off that a content creator and his motley crew have just stormed in, as it were. Well, but that's what uh, I try yeah. to boil it down. If, if, I, if yeah. I may interject at this point, one of the sure. great things sure. that one of the great things about comics game was they inspired so many content creators to take mm. up the mantle, like uh, uh, but uh. Every single one of us on the panel here, apart from Ryan and Kenzo, like uh, do kind book work and came from the chat in it. Like uh, for us, it's not about some noob coming along, like and um, doing good. Like uh, that's what we've all done as well. And like not to the millions of dollars chewing or whatever. Like, uh, but yeah, I think that part might be overstated. I uh, run my I like that yeah. in Comicscape, people want to make something good, and even if we're not all on the same level, there's mm. that desire, that passion to make something good that counters what's going on in the left was so important. Because the way I see it, if Ripperverse puts out bad content and doesn't care to change it and make it better, then they kind of are crapping on what I do, like my craft. Mm. And if they, and then it, then. If they put out bad content and then we're like, hey, guys, you're making what we do look like a grift because you're not – you know what I'm saying? Because the books aren't quality. They're just product. Um, you know, imagine if this was a restaurant. That, 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 was, the like original this spark. that, that was the original spark for me, like uh, the use of the word product in it. Like, uh, yeah. that was the first crack. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like a drug dealer like, or something. Bought the yeah. damn down or I mean, and it's like, so you're kind of crapping on what I'm about to. It doesn't make me mad. I'm not like raging about it, but I'm just mm -hmm. like, dude, it's like, that's a, it, I feel like, you know, you've kind of disrespected that. But what started making me criticize recently was I, I feel like he's being dishonest with the fans. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not wanting to admit that they redrew Yaira <laughs> because it's, guys, I mean, he would have to all he would have to do is admit that they actually took some extra time to do quality and he can't admit that because then he looks like he was wrong he contradicted mm -hmm. himself you know, yeah or there was or there wasn't so or there wasn't checks and balances in place to 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 spot those possible misses or errors in the first place it's like no like i mean if something gets fixed in the end then then that should that should be a, a feather in your cap that no we do have systems in place that if the quality isn't up to a level we're going to bring it up to a certain level um and and, and just full disclosure too like prior to eric july mm. stepping into his comic creation um i was very much uh there are many things politically 
that I align with on Eric and I agree with. Uh, it was when he, like, w to what Vaughn is saying, to, it's when he started creating art is where I, I started to veer away. Uh-huh. Uh, you just reminded me, I have a, a direct message and I have like, uh, to if anyone, if Eric July ever hears any part of this mm -hmm. episode, this is the part, uh, the, the shortest path from where we are now in liberal democracy to a libertarian utopia, the shortest pathway to achieve that is right through totalitarian communism. <laughs> uh, 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 we're almost an hour in already, and uh, we've barely even uh, covered this. Uh, and we, I want to watch the trailer as well. Uh, mm. And remember, uh, think of your suggestions for fan casting uh, Alpha Core. I guess uh, that's the thing we can think about. Also, uh, I'm doing this in Edge this week because I found a cool thing which is uh like if you click this uh it'll just read it and only edit weathers oh wow yeah number one is a 90 page graphic so <laughs> no longer do i have to say oh billy do, do you mind reading this for me uh, <laughs> it's more fun that then, so, so basically an indian combat robot is speaking on your behalf <laughs> <laughs> But I want to show you like an interesting thing that I found. So if I start it right here. Uh, Graphic novel that promises to wow you with stunning cinematic action. Do you have it sped, do you have it sped up? Feel, it's very I feel like fast. He's trying to sell me something over the phone. You know? <laughs> it's like these tech supporters. Short story, guys. Let's read this short story. 5,787. Oh, yeah. Sold a bunch of books, I uh, fourth story <laughs> about the ill-advised art. It's. Uh, yeah, like, I want to say something that. before. Oh. We, I He's say a loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something just before we start. We start the trailer, um, and it's it's kind of like where the base of my opinion comes at. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's the same thing. Like when a, there was a lot of big argument around, let's say, the new Star Wars. And I saw a lot of people like dogpiling people like Daisy Ridley and stuff like that. And it's like, you know that she just showed up for a paycheck and there was like someone behind the camera that after however many takes that they did was just like, yes, that you delivered that line. Perfect. Cut. Print. You know, send it off to the editor. You know, there was somebody else that was making those decisions. There was some there was a casting person that that chose her like, you know, like she didn't have any control over any of that. So. I don't in any way want any of my criticism to necessarily fall on this woman as an actor. To me, it's the decisions that all led up to her putting on the suit, delivering the lines that they did, and then them going to an editor or a sound engineer and being like, yes, this is this is what we wanted. This was our vision. Put this yeah, out. It, it's not your fault, giant lady who could <laughs> You know, I could read this for you, Kami. I have a much better voice than the Indian <laughs> combat robot. He, he really does. I was going to suggest your voice, actually, Ryan. Okay, go on. Be my guest. Is it zoomed in enough? Can you see it? Does, uh, no, you'll have to zoom in a bit more. My eyesight is fucking awful. Yeah, your 24-year-old eyesight. That's yeah. Wow, that's a lot of there you go. Alrighty yeah. then. Well, short story, ladies and gentlemen. Yaira hashtag one is set in the <laughs> Ripperverse, written by the superstar twins of horror. My goodness, Jen and Sylvia Soka or Soska or however the fuck you pronounce it. The, the Super Soka sisters. Yes. Yes. Uh, powerfully penciled by Deborah Carita, what a name, <laughs> with letters by the one Wait. and only Eric Weathers, the only name I could actually say properly. Uh, Gaira <laughs> Hashtag One is a 90-page graphic novel that promises to wow you with stunning cinematic action and answer burning questions about the Ripperverse's own resident femme fatale. Do you want me to read any more? 
Uh, what I just want to react on that quickly. Uh, sure, I sure. that little jokey thing of uh, Brie Larson as uh, Yaira, but that's what that says to me. I and mean, like, uh, you know, from everything that we've seen so far, Yaira is the Captain Marvel of the Ripperverse, like, uh, mm -hmm. clearly the most powerful being, like, uh, a hot blonde woman, like, uh. And that is the two-dimensionalness of the character of Captain Marvel. Once I realized how much Eric really loves pulling a, a Stan Lee and putting alliterations in all his descriptions, I, I keep seeing them more and more. The powerfully penciled um, is kind of hilarious. <laughs> um, but no, I noticed it earlier this week. I was like, holy shit, this one paragraph has like three alliterations in it where it's just like bombastically big, powerfully penciled, stylishly smooth. I'm just like, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, at least his writing's improving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he still doesn't know write. what a short story is or a log line. Like, that's not a short story. That's yeah. not a log line. Alrighty then. We gotta, we gotta yeah. teach him on that. <laughs> yeah. now, now, now we move on to the Brutal to the battle. log line. Log yeah. line? Is that supposed yeah, to say was... log line? Yeah, yeah that, but he did the... way too many lines for uh. Damn. For that's that. how it's called log line singular. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I just it's like what well, I'll I'll carry on unless it's more uh, of a log Tommy. jam. Log it oh it should be a, a log line should be no longer than like thirty words, like mm -hmm. uh, in one sentence. Like yeah. uh, mm -hmm. this is absurd. Okay. All right, go on, Ryan, if you would be so kind. Whom or what is Yaira? To the citizens of Floorspark, the Alpha Corps who protect them from except related threats, Yaira is nothing less than a powerful force of nature unlike anything else they've ever encountered. In the recent aftermath of a brutal battle that ended in stalemate, Alpha Corps commander Brian Solari told Yaira to vacate Floorspark and warned her to never return. But Yaira plays by no rules but her own. And now she's back. What does this frosty force want in sunny floor spark? <laughs> and frosty what force. motivated her return? Yaira's origins go back farther than anyone can possibly imagine or believe. And sometimes the cost of a primeval past is the haunting of one's present. I when just want to jump in on I just oh. want to jump in on this phrase. Uh, this always triggers me when someone says that they can't imagine something. Like, uh, just when you hear the words, you um, you have to imagine it to process like the words <laughs> and what the words mean. Like, uh, there's nothing that I can't imagine. Like, uh, 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 mate, tesseracts are quite difficult to imagine, but that's like the sort of level that I'm talking about. And it? like, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, can you imagine uh, if Trump won the next election? Like, yeah. I can imagine an elephant won the election. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, all righty then. Well, uh, where was I? Oh, yes. When you wield such immeasurable power, your choices can have drastic and long lasting consequences. What happens when Yara's past catches up with her and those in her orbit are unwittingly forced to pay the price for her actions? Read Yaira hashtag one by Jen and Sylvia Soska, or however the fuck you pronounce their name, to find the answers <laughs> to find the answers to these and other questions about the mysterious Yaira. Pre-order your copy of Yaira hashtag one today to learn about this breakout femme fatale powerhouse, Yaira. Parental advisory. Yaira hashtag one contains depictions of violence and troubling situations suitable for mature audiences aged 16 and above. And considering the Soska sisters' uh, horror history, I can understand yeah. that. So that was, <laughs> that was a fantastic <laughs> reading, Ryan. Oh, Who thank you. Yeah. Bravo, Perhaps I yeah. should get fired as the Ripper versus narrator. <laughs> it would be an improvement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm actually due to to talk to the executive assistant of the Ripperverse tomorrow, so yeah, we'll have to talk. This is more like the summary that you put on the back of like a book to Uh to advertise the book before they replaced it with a bunch of like what critics said and put that on the back of the book instead. Uh, B. A. Turner (laughs) calls it a log paragraph. Uh, what the fuck is a logline? It's like a thirty-word sentence, and it like to sum it up. But like, uh, the... it's, it's even shorter than it's like an elevator, elevator pitch, pitch in a pitch. sentence. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, it establishes your hero, what they're fighting up against, and what happens if they don't get what they want. The conflict, basically, uh-huh. it's, like, it's the it, idea even... for your story. Yeah, that sense. that sentence, like, uh, I mean, it's not great, but like that. That should, that should have been where it stops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I should have said, yeah. like, everything below those three dots. Fuck that <laughs> like, uh, and also rewrite that one. <laughs> That's one sentence as well. Um, where are we in the chat? Uh, buh, buh, buh. What's better than one log line? Several. Just don't understand. Oh, the chat's oh, flowing. Oh, oh, shit, there's 18 people watching. Make sure you subscribe and leave a like and stuff as well. Like, uh, I want to hear your suggestions in the chat for who we cast as uh, Alpha Core, like uh, mm-hmm. in this new uh, meme Wojak celebrity universe. Mm-hmm. How about Whatever. Scott Steiner? That'd be good. That's who? Yaira? No, no, <laughs> for one of the Alpha Core members. Oh. You know, jacked, very strong. Ain't anybody wrestling fans here? Uh, Big booty daddy. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that to Scott. That's not that's not cool. Don't do that to him. But, um, he's cool. I, he, he's I too will, cool for this shit. <laughs> well, I will say in response to Oh, Sarah to Jessica the... Parker can be horseman. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well, in response to all the criticism oh. in regards to the log line, my simple uh, change would be log lines. There you go. One letter change. Maximum change uh-huh. with minimal effort. I mean, the, I, I'm saying, oh, it's meant to be for like it's it's not a rule. Like, uh, do whatever you want. Like, uh, make your thing in it. Like, move differently or whatever. Like, uh, yeah. it's fine. Be like, great. Can do that. Yeah, be great. Be be original. Do something cool. <sighs> um, where are we in the chat? Oh, we was reading that. Oh, yeah. Yaira is uh, Anna from Frozen, right? Like, uh, imagine like, uh, Brie Larson the with Frozen Power uh, with the person of Greta Thunberg. Like, uh, that's why I assume Yaira is based on what I've seen so far. All right, All right, I still this? don't yeah. know what her powers are, only that it's supposed to have to do with ice and her eyes glow, which is cool, uh-huh. I guess. So but he's gonna I... write he's gonna write it in crayons this... in some of the next the... book for all of their uh, yeah. powers are for the retarded people that keep asking. Or we could watch this trailer and learn from she, the I'm pretty sure I watched the trailer, dude. <laughs> Based from the trailer, I'm pretty sure one of her superpowers is to um mispronounce very small words like child. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I was gonna say I've I've seen the trailer. I left it left me with more questions than it answered. Yeah, <laughs> and one of those questions right. was still okay. So what exactly is her power? One, <laughs> she, I, uh, ooh, go on. I should be, I should be uh, even though the computer did. Uh, Zombie box reviews for five great UK pounds says uh, it is what it is and what it is it is all of it this is. is a- what it is or relevant it is what it is relevant. all of it is what it is it's all irrelevant it's all relevant well, people have certainly I, been saying that definitely i really? i checked out this this trailer before and i described it in a simple word tacky it came yes. out of mm-hmm. fucking nowhere no one was calling for it and it's not as if the ripperverse is a multimedia franchise i thought and this is someone who likes to give the ripperverse and all who are participate in it the benefit of the doubt I thought the Ripperverse was a comic book company, not a multimedia franchise. But well, in the studios, we very, here we are. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. It's 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 why. Hmm. Yeah, why, tacky's well, why, the word I, mean, I thought too, man. Why did yeah. this tacky. movie get made? And if it's just uh, 
They Sorry, want to prove that they're good for TV and movies. <laughs> I like that, that so solid. much of their budget went into like the very first scene, which had absolutely nothing to do with the entire <laughs> rest of the trailer. It was just like yeah. there for no yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah, well, he, likes that Ryan. he likes Ryan. He likes Ryan. Oh, he does. He, he... Do you, like the do, 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 50th time I've seen him fall on a Kia, yeah. dude. Too. Yeah. He, he's, every day. So, so do, you guys, do you guys think that he hates Eric, Kias, man. Do, you, do you guys <laughs> think Eric thought it was good himself? You know, like. Yes. And... Yes. Yes. He yeah. has no oversight. He doesn't know what's good. He just yeah. goes, did, oh, that's amazing. His, he didn't even know his book had 3D assets in. Like uh, people yeah. say, oh, that he lied on that show and said that they didn't. He didn't lie. He didn't know, which is worse. Like, uh, he really thought that, uh, you know, Cliff Richard, you know, the 50s pop star, that uh, he threw it all. Right, let's fucking watch this. Such a weird combo. So weird. B horror movies, twins. All right. Mixed with superheroes. Mm. I was expecting ice powers in this. We didn't see any ice powers. Um, but they keep associating her with ice power. Right. It, yeah. it, isn't there a possibility that you could get struck for covering this fully, or do you have to stop it like every eight seconds? Oh, well, I don't know. But yeah, she's uh, been associated. Is there, a possibility with ice that, is there a possibility that we'll be struck by Eric July for promoting his trailer? Yeah. Like, yeah. uh,. <laughs> That's the risk that you take, isn't it? Like uh, he shouldn't. He should have learned his lesson not to do no, he's that. He's moving different. He's moving differently. Oh, <laughs> maybe we'll be all right. Then. If I sh if I share it and it's not on YouTube, does he have less of a case for the strike? If I just share you know, the video. Well, what I find no. in, what no. I what I find interesting, ladies and gentlemen, I know that I know Kami is using Edge instead of Chrome, but. We see how many likes this trailer has. I wonder how many dislikes it has. Right, they never show that. Yeah, no, not on it. They do on oh, no. Chrome. There's like, a, there's like a thing on on Chrome that can show it because I have Chrome and Edge. Hostman uh, says, "Get an ad blocker mark or oh, do no such thing on that stealing from content creators." Like uh, that's what ad blocking is. It uh, has eight hundred. It has eight hundred and thirteen dislikes. Okay, so wow. the so the trailer from the purely the perspective of of YouTube and of the Ripperverse channel, which is a rising star. I did make it a a rising star. So this is being seen by the viewership as positive, and uh, more well, than negative. Uh, yeah. You can see that it has a like ratio of over one in ten viewers leaving a right. like. Uh, That's another way of looking at it, Kami. I know that uh, many people have watched this more than one time, like uh, to really yeah. soak I it left in. all the dislikes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well I, I would, I mean, I guess it, it is more favorable into not favorable, but wouldn't this like be considered like at 3,500 likes to 800 and some odd dislikes? Wouldn't that truly be considered mixed more than it would uh, be? Mixed leaning towards favorable. It, it would be mixed uh, if it was about if it was about say three and a half thousand likes to say oh I don't know like three and a half thousand other... dislikes if okay. it was fifty <laughs> fifty. But in okay. regard to three and a half thousand to about eight hundred and thirty, I'd say that oh it's got to okay. be 90 90 percent positive. I, this is off the top of my head, so I I'm More not very good at math. It's it's definitely they're definitely gonna love it and when the book comes out it's gonna be bad and a whole lot of them are gonna say it's the best book ever written that's what we're oh, dealing oh, with here that's how so it's an, works it's an 80 20 ratio folks oh, okay. i think it's an 80 20 ratio okay the, the classic pareto okay. ratio uh i want this on record like uh the i the super soccer sisters uh mm -hmm. because of them like i'm mildly interested in this book have more interest in this book than any previous ripperverse book like mm -hmm. uh, i expect because of the super soaker sisters this book will make more money than any other previous ripperverse book and 
because it's written by the Super Soldier Sisters, it will actually be the best rip of verse book yet. Like, uh, I actually believe that is going to be the case. It's a low bar. Like, uh, we're talking low bars here. Like, uh, but that's that's my opinion. Like, uh, um, prove me wrong. Well, well, it's it's. Uh, I, I think you told me that you told me to save it for for the stream, Mark. But um, I I feel kind of in this in the same way that you do. Like, um, I saw to me was apathetically boring. Alpha uh -huh. Core was pathetically bland. But at least Yaira is laughably comical. So I would consider <laughs> that the best of the three, if that's what we're <laughs> judging it by, for sure. Look, if he's gonna if it's if it's gonna be bad, at least go for so bad it's good. Hey. Hitting that hitting that bullseye. Well, one thing's for sure, ladies and gentlemen, if if it keeps raising money like this in future projects, the Ripperverse is certainly not going anywhere, and neither is its detractor base. <laughs> why why do people think the Suska sisters might have a shred of talent? Have you guys ever seen their short horror movie for the ABCs of Death? I don't, don't want shit. to. It's not I don't even like a, I don't it's like not even horror. a story. And guess what it's called? Mm. It's called T is for torture porn. Oh my god. <laughs> they stuck you to their wheelhouse. Wow. I've seen a lot of No, no ABCs of Death. Yeah. Horror movie, and they do every letter, and everyone gets two and a half minutes or so to make a short film around a letter, and then they pick what that letter, you know, what horrible thing that letter assigns to. Oh, uh, so it's they got the letter T, and they got to do torture porn, and it was it wasn't even a story, and then they've only written what like five comics, six comics in their life. Uh huh. But that's uh, five or six more than Eric Jalot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but Chuck Dixon, even though that Alpha Course sucked. Oh my God, what a bad book! I mean, I had a headache reading that thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it will be. Maybe it'll be like so good it's bad. I could. I could dig on that. I could get into that entertainment. Wow. I mean, this trailer's been making me laugh and laugh. So that's oh what God. I meant by it's so bad me it's good. So is this trailer is so, so bad it's? I mean, so funny. bad it's good. Yeah. 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 So hopefully so, the book, maybe the book will be like that. The book is just so bad that you want like, it because it's hilariously bad. Like, it's will she have the accent in the book? You know, like will they questions. write it in like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I personally think <laughs> I'd have to disagree with with Kami Mark. I don't think uh, Yaira you one think will the be books. the mo most financially successful. Although it did have a great solid start, I, I personally think that just like with Alpha Core, it had a solid start and then slowly but surely it will then gain more revenue i think the same thing will happen with uh, yaira my lowest estimate was one and a half uh, but i think two million is a is a solid a solid projection and hopefully it gets there and we can have many more yairas to for people well, to can. enjoy and for people to pick apart i think the, I think the plural, one... I think the plural is yaira yeah yaira yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking though, if this one does end up being hilariously bad, like the trailer, then there'll be a second wave. There'll be the first wave that are just jump on it because you know they like uh, Eric. You know they like his stuff. They don't really care about the comics, or whatever. And then there's going to be some that jumped on it because they they're curious to see just how good or bad it may be. So when those people start posting uh you know pictures and stuff from the books as they start getting them mm -hmm. if those books are hilariously bad <laughs> i think there'll be a separate sep uh, second wave of yeah. purchases mm -hmm. of everybody's like oh i want this too so i can show people look how bad this is. look how bad it's funny well, I think um, alpha oh, yeah. core raised i think alpha core raised six hundred thousand dollars on its first day that's off the top of my uh Head and then it ended up getting to 1.3 or 1.4. So uh -huh. you use that so as a as a basis. In, it could get to two million. It's just a in, the, in the chat. In the chat, take notes. Uh, re recognize that if you suggest that Yaira is going to be the best one, what happen is the supporters will then counter that argument by saying actually it's going to do worse than the previous books. Like. Uh, that's a nice little trap that you can lay for them. 
Uh, a, uh, going back to what you were saying a moment ago about the Super Soaker Sisters, uh, Vaughn, uh, about their content not uh, having story or whatever. Uh, Magnificent Devil with this comment in the chat says their work is just gross out movies. Uh, and I think that what they will have over Eric July's work, for me at least, in my brain, like a, I'm consciously trying to elicit like an emotional reaction inside of you, and it's usually laughter, but I'm really good at doing tragedy and it. Like I want to make you feel a little bit sick, like while you're breathing, mm -hmm. uh, and that ability to, uh, you know, make someone. Feel or something like uh, is pretty important too, and they definitely have been making all kinds of people feel all kinds of things like uh, for the last <laughs> six weeks. Or oh yeah. <laughs> that looks kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. You know what that reminds me of? I can't uh, tell the sisters apart in this picture. <laughs> 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 That's a good joke. Oh. I can't tell them apart full stop. It reminds me of this. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> he says, if you look at the campaign, there's no shipping date. That's uh, not totally uh, correct. Uh, it does say at the top right here estimated fulfillment start date. Like, uh, I know that's not a shipping date or whatever. Uh, I was going to say that image reminds me of this, uh, mm. not Dead Devil Vampirella variant, mm. like uh, the last oh, yeah. Vampirella book, like that was ever made. <laughs> like, uh, well, remember, book. folks, winter is oh. coming at the start of summer, yes, yeah, summer 2024. <laughs> oh, where did I get that? It's just like Starfield, folks. It's a lot of little things, but they all add up. Mm -hmm. Just had enough of this current day modern Californian shit. It's boring. Boring. Yeah. Is this as loud as it gets? I'll move to this one to make it louder, didn't I? Better turn some of those tabs off, Kami. Your system must be collapsing. Train my body to do things that people like me should be able to do. But unfortunately for me, blind. All right. Is that look like a parking spot to anyone, or did someone just park their Kia in the middle of like a town square and go, I know, It'll right? be safe just here. Put it right here. No one will mess with it here. On. And then, like, <laughs> Man, of all I, so things, could have landed Come on, anywhere. Man. This could have landed Their insurance anywhere. is this not going to believe this. This was them. on a shoestring budget shot in one day. You guys are just nitpicking. Uh, folks, nitpicking. folks, I will say <laughs> I went to town yesterday, and I shit you not, in the town center where no cars are supposed to be, no trucks, there was a fucking car parked by the side of one of the shops. Like, who the fuck put that there? And I'm like, what it's just wonder? waiting to have somebody drop a person on it. Like, yeah. I mean, come on. Just asking for a black guy to fall on top of it. Especially if it's a Kia. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I just hate that, like, this actually looks cool. Nothing yeah. to do with anything. Absolutely nothing to do with yeah. it. I mean, I give credit I like to the, the architect. Effects. Yeah. Because the, the, they look like they actually, like, did a cool effect where they, you know, crushed in the top of the car as he lands on it. Like yeah, like it's it's cool charges. looking and it's awesome. It's a cool, awesome scene, and then it's like the entire rest of the trailer. It doesn't get addressed again. Uh, it's just the there. The location w was chosen well too. Like I like the building in the background. It's cool. It's to look futuristic and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Even in slow mo, that was a good. That was a. I that like was a pretty good effect. That was pretty decent. Yeah. Are you yeah, sure I wanted that wasn't the Soka sisters screeching? Yeah, honestly, <laughs> this is the coolest part of the trailer, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the trailer. And, and you don't even know why he falls out. Of, if you don't know Isom, right? If you haven't read the books, you have no clue what's going on. You're just yeah. Like, what? 
Why did he fall? Uh, and uh, yeah. it's it's a it's like a it's a reference and it like a self referential reference to the uh, you know the Dick Master something where uh, what are his powers like can he fly like uh, his trying this is supposed yeah, to be like is, a response yeah. to that oh whatever. like a tongue in cheek uh -huh. no, like, like, yeah, uh, yeah that's cute but if, like if you're from outside uh, awesome. what's going on then it means nothing like uh, I, you know, if he wants to do live action trailers, he should have saved this for another item. It, it's like Vince like, Russo wrote a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought it was the most iconic yeah. moment of the rip of us so far. That's why it's been in everything. I yeah. I it's, really it's like the moment. I really like that he's created a, basically a clippable video of when sales start to fall that everybody can like totally start reusing. Yeah. You know? Oh no. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Joanne B. I'm gonna guess. I can't quite see. Maybe it's Sloan B, but I doubt it. Uh, thanks for subscribing. If you're watching and you don't subscribe, please subscribe. Like, uh, we're not too far away from 2000 or something now, I think. <laughs> My chest. <sighs> and then actual trailer. <laughs> There's no the sounds off. Yep. Thanks for pointing that out. Is I'm not even going to go back to like cover the words that we missed because is, is so this bullshit. like the announcement that Mixer is coming back? That Microsoft has bought Mixer again. Does anyone remember Mixer? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this the background color looks similar. That's why. I I brought it up, but I since I'm a, a, a tractor in in this uh, in this panel, <laughs> I want to at least be able to point out what I think is working, and yeah, I'm so. glad that this is this actor here that they chose actually can speak his lines, and you don't need subtitles to understand what he's saying. Yeah, Jabba says he hates his hair. Wow. That's my that's yeah, like I mean, what I yeah, like I mean, about yeah, him. The whole cowboy hair. Like like he does, dude. Yeah. He does. No, I think that whoever the the um I forget what you call the position that the 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 casting manager, not casting manager, casting, casting direct director. director. Casting this couch. Was, oh, no, that's a different thing. This was the best. Ah. Choice, this was the best choice of the lot of everybody because at least you can understand what this guy is saying. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a five dollar super <laughs> chat here from. Hey, Dami. Uh, I know. I know, Vaughn. It's a really low bar, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. something. Possible. I want to read this because this is uh, an important one. Uh, Dermy Wormy for five dollars says, even though I'm pro Ripperverse and even disagree with Mark on politics. I'm sending this because it's okay even to disagree with. And even disagree, disagree with my politics. politics. I'm, I'm sending, sending this because, because it is okay, okay to disagree. disagree. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I just like to say Dermy Wormy is a bit of a weirdo, though. No, he's not. <laughs> yes, he's Dermy, a bit of a weirdo. Dermy's a good lad. He's sound. Yeah, like... Uh... Oh, boy. He's, he's he's like, old, like a 12 year old girl, Kenzo. He's not sound. <laughs> he's a bit weird. And he's a weeb. That's a weeb background. Oh, oh, old... uh, that's how you say it. I thought it was weird, not weeb. Damn. But yes, like, uh, how, how can we build a society without being able to talk to people that we disagree with? Like, such a basic, like, obvious concept. You sharpen your swords. Oh my god. <laughs> what they're doing in uh, Haiti. That's what they're doing in Haiti. Uh, mm. Opinion Nerded for five dollars says I just uploaded a Yiram music on my channel. It's my original music, so your stream won't get a copyright strike if you choose to check it out. Uh, DM me a, DM me a link on Twitter and we'll use it as an outro or something. Like uh, that can be a thing. That way, if it's terrible, I can just press end stream, like, and not have to explain myself, like, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Yeah. 
I just, I just uploaded, uploaded a year of music, music on my, on my channel. channel. It's, it's my, my original, original music, music series, series that I'm going to get a music, music copyright, copyright strike. That's, that's what happens when you use fucking technology, you commie prick. <laughs> Wait, is that how it's pronounced? Yera? Did I've been saying right? Yera. That's how Eric is. saying Yera. Yera. I thought it was Yaira. Yeah, yeah. But you know, oh. Eric is famous for his pronunciations of things. I mean, like a Palima, of course, is a classic horse. Or business. Uh, business, yeah. There's a. Oh, I had loads. When I was making that video, I picked up so many. I thought about making a compilation of just him mispronouncing words, but. <laughs> That's like, very racist, Connie. It would have, very it would have been no, it would have been very it, irrelevant, I think. Very irrelevant. <laughs> irrelevant, that's fine. No, um, I would you sh I will never shame people for mispronouncing words. I have done it a little bit. Like, but I shouldn't well, because everybody gaps. Uh, yeah. Pe people who <laughs> mispronounce words, they do so because they learned the word from reading, like uh, and like that's good. Like you, at least yeah, you're they're not saying it phonetically instead that of someone else told you. Like you mm. got your own thought or something. I don't know. Uh... I've been struggling with that next that goodying. I know he mispronounced it, the polymuth, but how you, is it, it? How do you pronounce the first? It's goodying the polyamorous. Goodying. <laughs> It is a strange name is for a it comic. Good book Ying book. or what, good, what is it? Just Good Ying. Good, good Ying. Ying. Yeah. Dude, yeah. do you read Good Ying, the polymuth? The polymuth. Could, could you meet someone's the polymuth? Do you, do you, could you hear? I don't know. It's just a weird title. He yeah. comes from the city of good Forest Ying. Park. And he has like a monthly fee and he shows up and he's like, got any uh, things for me to do? Any mysteries to solve? That's going to cost you extra. <laughs> like he's a dick. I hated Gooding. He showed up like a <laughs> dick in that comic book. <laughs> All right, let's we still got hey, just Please, please you. join me in welcoming her to our team. Dr. Sally Rodell. <laughs> Adopt or die. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. I want to adopt a child now before I get killed. Right? That is funny seeing that again. <laughs> Good God, woman. It's, adopt it's... or die. Adopt or die. Well, because, in, and like I said, I turned on the closed captioning, and the closed captioning deciphers it as adopt or die. So now I'm yeah. curious. Is that the actual line, and it's just a badly written line, and we're we're like, no. giving her a like it, it is it, it is adapt or die. Like I'm like ninety nine percent positive. That is the saying. Like yeah. she's not the first person to say something like that. So it should yeah. be adapt. It's like it's not clever or anything like that. It's what just, accent uh, is that? Right? Is it's a mix of well, Austrian, um, <laughs> what they think Austrian, Austrian sounds like. Lithuanian. Lithuanian, Scottish, Polish, Hungarian. Yeah. In the credits, block. she had she had an Icelandic vocal coach, and not one person guesses Icelandic when they hear wow. it. They, go, they think Russian or Scottish, you know. No way. I thought Austrian, maybe. Oh, but, so that's not yeah. her real accent? No. Nine colors. She's got a yeah, she's oh, got a regular. Wow. You like, don't, they folks, you don't understand. The accent is Yugoslavian, but the country doesn't exist anymore. That's why no <laughs> one knows it. I, okay, well, see, I, I didn't watch the making of. I was. Oh, it's really I good. Guess, I guess I was giving it more credit. I, <laughs> I, I thought that they just hired somebody that had a really thick accent that had trouble speaking the lines. Okay. Nope. That's good. No, they to told that. her to do this. <laughs> they told her to say it that way. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can, can we do it one more time, but more so? You guys are just nitpicking, man. This is. It was done on a shoestring budget, and it was all done in one day. Remember, the everything uh, was spent yeah. on that that scene at the very beginning. The rest, they're just using I, chump uh, change at this point. <laughs> they're digging yeah. in couch cushions. I mean, I know, like all. You Americans struggle with some accents. If you're asked to do an English accent, you all sound like Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins. So, like, you got she was Canadian, Cockney. right? Is she Canadian? Wow, the actress probably. Yeah, they probably, filmed it in yeah. Canada. Mm. 
Wow. Okay, that's a whole new. Spin. You you do hear her actual accent in the making of, and I, like I personally think if she would have just used her normal accent, it would have been better. I agree uh, with that. I, I made the joke previously that she should have just done like a Fargo accent. I don't know where in America Fargo is, but like a, you know, it's got that Swedish chef. Oh, 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 you have to go up. You have to go up a little bit. Yeah. Was it yeah. Fargo, Wisconsin? And, I don't know. It's just what fucking they, snow yeah, and but... fucking Swedish people in We're America. We're fucking British. We don't miss... know. Uh, what am I doing? Here we go. Yeah, well, let's hear Dr. it one more time. Dr. Sally. Dr. Sally Rodin. Adopt or die. Nice. You're in the area, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it is serious law of fear. Very important to survive the test of time. Can we have the subtitles, please? Don't we yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, that. <laughs> that's that. I know that's it. It would help. <laughs> her, the accent they're trying to give her, and the lines that they gave her to say are not helping each other. It's very marble mouthy. It's all I have. And, but if if the character is an alien pretending to be human, like that kind of makes sense. So like uh, the you know um, you're not gonna <laughs> land on an alien world and speak alien like straight away. I uh, like uh, it's gonna take some time. I mean, obviously yeah. she's been there uh, long enough to get like a degree or whatever to yeah, work she with, already like, yeah she's got I was gonna two say, degrees I think she's been there long enough and why does the alien have an earth accent or a couple of earth accents uh -huh. instead of Ooh. uh <laughs> mm -hmm. who fucking knows is the truest law of the earth very of the ability to survive the test of time like this barely, barely. <laughs> And that part was really Scottish, that Four. sentence. Until Fairly. <laughs> the truth. The only few things are the abilities to survive the test of time. In Canada, that accent qualifies you for maid, praying gesture. <laughs> That's savage. Uh, Alex, we are leaving $2. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, fucking hell. Send some music video. I don't, I don't have, have an amigo. amigo. You won't, you won't be hurting my feelings, feelings by, by saying, saying it sucks. sucks. Lower. Lower. Cool. We'll have a look. Uh, thank you for the five dollars opinion, no, dear doors. Thanks, dude. Uh, yeah, thank you. Don't you may not be around to see them to their fullest fruition. <laughs> but this little trick now will be the triumph of echoes from the past. Oh, here. Five minutes. Hold the line. Seek high. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> out of the way, cop! <laughs> Get out of my way! <laughs> oh my god, that's what heroes do, guys. That's what heroes do. Again, like okay. there, there are shot choices that you can make to not make a street look that empty and like completely not like there's anything bad happening. There's like three people standing in the back in a huge open wide shot. And it's like, wow! It's just it, it you know. Time for the hit zoop. Um, if the cop had confronted song... her and said, "You can't come back here," and she kind of knocked him out of the way, that could have worked, right? Yeah. I honestly, well, I actually didn't know if she was supposed to be a bad guy or a good guy, but uh, I also could take that as an attempt at she doesn't realize how strong she is and she thought she was just doing like a gentle thing she and he goes, whoa, like a gentle little, all right, thanks, bump thing. Yeah, I, I would have done, I would have done much, I would have done much tighter shots and like flip back and forth over people's shoulders so that you couldn't tell how empty that street was. It's nitpicky, but but mostly, that was another thing about this entire trailer. Is I'm like, so is she a villain and like she getting her own book? I think she's an anti-hero, cool. girl mm. boss. Uh huh. Captain Marvel. It's Captain Marvel. Like uh, I'm calling it now. Frozen oh, Captain okay. Marvel Thunberg. Like uh, that's the the combo. 
Uh, Isn't that weird where you don't know if characters are heroes or not? Like, yeah. That seems to be the case with a lot of Riververse characters. What did that guy do to get, sh- like, deserve to be shoved like that? Because he told her how long it was going to take for, like, you no, know, authorities to get there. He didn't tell her anything. His back was to her, and she came yeah. up behind him and shoved him for no good reason because she's a bully. Well, yeah, he was saying, yeah. he was saying just, that they were going to – Alpha Core was going to be there in about five minutes. But he wasn't saying it to her. He was saying it ahead mm-hmm. of him, like shouting it ahead of him. Yeah. And then she goes, thanks for yeah. the – This, is, a, this yeah. is about Yara's white privilege. Like, uh, if <laughs> Ison pushed a cop like that, Lekker and yeah. then went under the tape to get shot in the back by American police and it Lekker. Yeah. Also, but that's uh, okay because this is Canada. What again. what 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 did you guys think about the look of the actress though? To like obviously the the accent ain't right, but I think she kind of looks okay. She's kind of yeah. I think yeah, she's she seems to fit the role. I like her. I, I think, think she's an pretty, Amazon. Yeah. And Yara yeah. is an Amazon, so it fits. Yeah. Uh, I preferred. Uh, I think that. Kristen Nova's cosplay of Yara uh, is better than uh, this costume design here. Um, what yeah, I wanted to add, I'm yeah. quite sure that this in the background says Dominion on the building. <laughs> but for a moment, I thought it said Domino's. Left oh. <sighs> Would have been a thing. <clears throat> Pardon me, sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, no sound, Mark. Tiny little megaphone. That was cute. We got a sound effect, though. I lived. I am still I here. Lived. I'm on you. I, that edit right there, I still live, and then among you were like two completely different lines that were stitched together so weird, and I hate like that editing choice right there. Yeah. The, the sentence doesn't flow right, and like the more times that I've watched it, the among you part feels really off. Like there were more lines in between there and they just edited them out and then smashed them together. And the continuity of that line suppose, supposedly supposed being one sentence feels feels off. Well, like also it, the it, fact it, that it, if uh, she's uh, trying to blend in with humans and crap or whatever, saying I'm I'm still here among you is kind of weird for your <laughs> thanks for hiring me. Speech. Well, and her her <laughs> glowing blue I don't care if she's wearing glasses, her glowing blue eyes all the time kind of give it away too. <laughs> But it's a still weird part to even have in your you know I just got hired to this company speech like. You got you got to be careful with those. Like the the Suska sisters probably have an awesome collection of horror movie contacts, like a lot of horror movie filmmakers do. Um, and they probably they might have I don't know if they did, but they might have brought those out and thought they'd be perfect for Yaira. But with our HD cameras now, if you use a cheaper contact, it can look kind of off and look kind of not nat like kind of weird. And sometimes her contacts because they were cheaper, they shifted a little, which gave her kind of a cockeyed look in some yeah. shots. And yeah, that those... really threw me off. I was like, what? You guys can't allow that, you know? Yeah, they can shift in your eye. And since they have a cutout for your pupil, like your pupils don't change size, or you can't see pupils changing size to react to light, there's just a cutout. So if your pupils yeah. get bigger or sm- or smaller, especially, then that cutout, it looks weird. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, this is the high, this is a high money shot right here. Like, a, mm. I'm not sure if they did this in you know 3ds Max or Maya or Blender or whatever here, but this is again, this, I'm sure a big portion of the budget went to this. Unless they went to just I don't know stock photo. Yeah, that, I think it looks yeah. like licensable stock video of Earth. Like this, it don't look. Oh, well, they might have employed someone to make it, like you said, but I doubt it. Yeah, it looks fine to me. I no, no, I think it looks good. I just, I, I'm, I'm curious how much money went into that shot because I think it looks good. Not as much as went into that car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this trailer, I, I'm sure we can all agree, it, this trailer is tacky and unnecessary. The Ripperverse is not a multimedia franchise. Need, I agree. And it shouldn't be a television series or a movie franchise. Mm-hmm. It should stick to what it succeeded at doing from a financial perspective and that's coming from someone who is neutral in this matter i enjoyed the animated trailers that he did for his comic books much more yeah for sure 
they were yeah, they, for what they were they were really good but yeah i think he was maybe like you said um he thought this was good and thought it was going to get the same reception there was a few people that um gave it the same reception as the animated because when that dropped immediately people were like animated movie when uh, when's the animated series coming out like and you know it did look good but it, it wasn't like TV series grade animation. It was. Yeah. It had some timing issues, and it, it, it was good. It served its purpose. It was really good to you know for a comic, and they could have easily done the same again. But according to Eric, um, this cost a fraction of what that animated trailer cost him. Oh yeah. wow! Okay. Yeah. I believe well, it. Hmm. Yeah. I believe it. One day shoot, like mm-hmm. shoestring, like like small cast. Um, stock effects, you know? Yeah. Keep saying, keep saying this one day shoot thing. Uh, and mm. we learned last week that 300 was shot in 60 days. This isn't like a 60th as good as 300. It's not fucking. <laughs> and, and it was never, <laughs> and, and there was only one location shot in the entire film. Yeah, I think I I believe that it was shot on location at the college, and I think they probably borrowed a lot of the equipment from the college to shoot the thing. Hmm. Well, I hope some got the college credit then. Well, there's there's probably there's there's there's, there's probably there's more credits than there is action (laughs) in this trailer. I like how uh, they actually stick the thing they're advertising at the very very ass end. They just throw it up there, like, oh yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. there, there's a book and stuff. Well, like, <laughs> I, per- I personally think that the standards between animation and live action. I think when it comes to to live action, the standard should be higher, personally, and uh, not lower. So, of course, this this tr- I call this trailer tacky, despite the fact that Yaira is a financial success. Uh, just as it is from my analysis, but this wasn't necessary. Whoever yeah. greenlit this yeah. need uh, uh, an ex- an explanation mm-hmm. needs to be found for why this was greenlit when it's yeah. not. This green. is uh, magnificent. Devil is suggesting my uh, hypothesis. Just that the that's so the sisters like convinced him to do it. Like uh, that is because... my theory too. Is that so... they wanted to make it. They are, they're the ones that wanted to make it. <laughs> and I would not be yeah. surprised to learn that this trailer is the reason the book was delayed. This uh, was filmed in no this was filmed in November. Yeah, and look how long it took them to edit it. That's like what I'm saying. Like uh, mm. this was the best thing that they could put together like in the three months no. or one. I don't think it took them that long to edit this together, guys. And I don't think they held back on the book just for this trailer. I think they had to redo art because it wasn't up to snuff the first round. Are you trying to say the book's late? The, the, we're coming up uh, on my, uh, probably my favorite special effect in, in the whole thing coming up. I can't wait. Oh, here it happen. comes. Let's, let's get back to it. And I'll, not, 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 the sky, no, not the sky blast. It's when she flies. Love- oh, that yeah, that's one of her powers, I think, because we didn't see no ice powers, but you know, she's strong right and she can, <laughs> there we she, go. Can, she can. Why did she? Bit. Why did she fly five feet? <laughs> uh, yeah, she could, she still can, in front of the same building. <laughs> Travel short distances in a long time. Yeah, and then lands like five feet away to punch a chicken. Yeah, the but don't, don't you ever like uh, leave the house and walk a couple of. Meters and then turn around and go because you got something like it's just like that. She was like, you clearly see that she's like, oh, there you are. Like, uh, it's like, right, that's it. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna find that bitch. Oh, there she is. Like, uh, sweet dreams. Oh, oh, sweet dreams. Yeah, and again, there was another thing where, like, I'm like, so wait, is there a is that the that villain's name chilled? Like. C H I L L E D, and I was like, "Oh no, she can't pronounce child." That's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, I think she's saying that sweet dreams are best served chilled, like uh, <laughs> other than <laughs> like the old adage that doesn't exist. <laughs> 
Sounds like something James Bond would say. <laughs> you know what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. <laughs> Great <laughs> film, oh, by yeah. the way. Ice Batman to meet and you. Robin. Yeah. That struggle is the friction of creation. <laughs> I would like to thank Mr. Eusebio for allowing me the opportunity to discover and create alongside my esteemed colleagues at Projectus. Thank you. Oof. Brutal. <laughs> Deals. Handshakes. SS yes, says they should have hired Arnold Schwarzenegger to play, or it would have been less. <laughs> <laughs> An archaeologist? It's a bit archaic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he looks like Herman Munster. <laughs> His head is so long so and square. And unnecessary, these two. Oh god, that. I like the phrase "archaeology." That's archaic. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, of course. It's kind of, it's kind of how it works. Uh, and... um... <laughs> Mr. Weird. It's like a history. God, that was so long ago. <laughs> Well, they needed another alliteration in there, you know. Like, <laughs> what? What's another A word after after archaeology? Archaic. Perfect. But what is the point in this scene? What is the point in this scene? How is this making a customer excited for a new comic book that's coming up? Girl boss. Well, don't don't you want to know what she discovered and created? Like, uh, it's quite an impressive duo of things. Like, uh, arguably opposites of each other but this what? scene is supposed to show that the guy with the weird wig is the only one suspicious of her and then he gets told by the powerful black woman like in all of our media now which is like i see this every day in every tv show every movie she's gonna tell him to shut up and give him the look look for the look you're gonna see so who are these black two woman look. Like, that's what i mean who are they, well, they yeah. main characters you're right in the... I, I'm they are characters sure. in the book i'm yeah. pretty sure that's the uh the witch girl the one with the with no, the red blood power. That's not, that's not Blood Ruth. That's uh, okay. Like Isom's sister or something. Oh, okay. Someone who's in the blood corporate Ruth. world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I reckon uh, archaic might be the next word in a dictionary after archaeology. Like, uh, <laughs> I think it might. Be <laughs> Still, still like the Soska sisters writing, or uh, just wondering. Uh, still like it? Okay. I didn't say I liked it. I said it would be better. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Listen, Jerry. Not what Not I was quiet. saying. It's just an unusual area of expertise to pair with biology. Well, Doctor Rodell, from my understanding, is an unusual woman. Is she gonna be Jerry? She's on our side. <laughs> congratulations. Listen, Jerry. <laughs> ah, congratulations. Jerry. Photo? They don't know I'm an alien. <laughs> <laughs> See, out of everyone, Jerry looks like the alien, though. <laughs> Jerry definitely distracts, doesn't he? <laughs> so, so which one's the Slitheen again? I really have no idea. Doctor Who fans will get I that think right. He's got secret <laughs> hair powers. <laughs> yeah, I'm or, or, the the hair, or the hair is sentient. And I don't know if I've seen any of the detractors uh, suggest this, but um, I'm quite sure that the Ripperverse takes place inside a, a libertarian utopia, right? Like uh, that's a uh, that's the subtext underneath that is trying to hide, like to reveal in like twenty books time. Like uh, mm. so, Libertalia. Like, huh? Libertalia, the land of the libertarian. For God's sake, Kami, why the fuck are you <laughs> drinking? Do you not know that Libertalia is the the land of the libertarians? I, I thought that was. I never wish I was drinking. <laughs> Liberia or something? Oh, that's a whole different thing, Liberia. <laughs> uh. 
what's Jerry looking at as well? Like they're all sort of like looking that way. She's looking down, and Jerry's looking up. At... Oh yeah, no, they're all looking in a different direction. None of them are looking the same direction. <laughs> well, it's just like the uh, like you know the, the people scared on the street. Like nobody knows where the danger is actually coming from because everyone's running in a different direction. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was correct. All right. Texas secedes from America in his world. In his universe. We're almost at the end of the trailer. Because they're all looking. There's only like six people in front of them as well, so they're like each one's looking at a different one. Yeah, looking at a different person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, I enjoy your classic Texas cowboy businessman. Like, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm surprised he's not wearing, you know, that thing what Texas cowboy businessmen wear instead of a tie. He uh, looks like that. Bolo, he looks man. like that Hodge <laughs> fellow. You know that that gun rights uh, anti gun rights fellow, uh, David oh. Hodge. Yeah, David uh, Ho uh, Hogg. Hog, David Hogg. Whatever the fuck yeah. his name is. Oh. He looks like that. He does. He does. Oh. He looks like David Hogg trying to be Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> you took that like a chomp. Were you trying to not? <laughs> it was meant to be a death blow. It was meant to be a death blow. Oh, God, I love it. Amazing. So mean. It's going to be on a shirt. You do realize that's going to be on a shirt. Because it makes it look like that poor girl needs some help. And. Oh. This yeah. chick comes and just tries to kill her. This smiling looks like a hate crime in progress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> smiling evilly at her as she was already on the ground and punching her while she was on the ground and then gloating over her. Yeah, I was going to say the last we saw her, she was on the ground and it seemed like she was suffering and needed help. And like an uh, American she, hero, you might say. She just comes up and tries to kill her with one <laughs> blow without asking any questions, I guess. And yeah, she's supposed to be the. That's why I'm so confused. She's supposed to be the hero. Or... So you if you don't terrible. know it, you're going to be like, this is a villain. This is, And then yeah. they're like, buy her book. And you're like, okay. I mean, villains do have books sometimes. There's nothing yeah, wrong they with that. Yeah, they They're great. They, villains they're are cool great. Enough. But I feel like I'm being sold a hero who just acts like a villain. You know? She's yeah. an amusing hero. Anti-hero. Well, we okay, so like the Punisher, like the Punisher or Wolverine, right? But you gotta be careful because the more we, if, if we make fun of that accent too much, man, there's gonna be a, a T-shirt that comes out soon that says it's meant to be a death block because they've already yeah. done the 3D Dude, asset T-shirt. I, I can't uh, help it. I would rock that shirt. shirt. I would not sure. even buy any Yaria merch, but I would still buy that shirt. It was yeah. meant to be a death block. <laughs> Wait till it's it goes up for sale chill. 30 bucks. And then get it, it revolves like, around the yeah. idea, Kenzo, of monetize your haters, which is an interesting concept. Because... No, it's a re I, I get it, bruv. It's a really good concept. It's, it's like, right, no, these people I, have I, been I... taking... No, hold on, hold on. It's like, these people have been taking the piss out of me on Twitter, so I need my fans to um, give me some more of your money to make me feel better. I know exactly how it works. I, but... I, I personally think that the concept <laughs> of monetize your haters is... A fundamentally he's not monetizing his haters, he's demonetizing his fans because his fucking Be feelings are hurt. Uh, That's exactly the, what's happening. The, the idea of turning those who are opposed to you... Demonetize your haters, that's great. I'm, I'm going to call a video of that. That's fucking excellent. So the, the, the idea <laughs> of turning those who are opposed to your, to your business model or to your content creation, the idea of monetizing those who are opposed to you creates a, a vicious trap, especially if you're financially based, that you need more people to oppose you in order to be more profitable. And that could create a vicious circle that could destroy uh, a fledgling organizations. So I'm, I'm the kind of creator that tries to, you know, stay under the radar. Don't mm -hmm. be too controversial, although I'm being very controversial in, in recent months as part of being reality based. And it's just try your best to have fine talks with, with fellow creators, and you know build a solid community around you. You don't want a fucking battle every campaign. That's my view. Uh -huh. It is fun though, like being in the trenches, and it like uh, I'm, I, I described it the other day as like uh, 
the the swimming's more exciting when there's blood in the water already. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, uh, it makes it more of a thrill. Do you uh, know what which... kills the dinosaurs? A death blow. A death blow. <laughs> <laughs> Going back, Krishna. Uh, going back, Krishna kid. Yeah, get that. And uh, the Kim Il Sung thing. Um, I should put a link in the chat. Bro. Was that the end of the trailer before they just show the uh, the, the the? It the, was uh... not the end of oh. the trailer. Uh, here we go. I think they. I think they should just show the. Uh... Oh, that's it. Oh, it is directed, yeah. produced, written oh, by. Okay. <laughs> yeah, then yeah, it's it a whole bunch of credits, and then it's the actual like, oh yeah. So this is oh, for a book. They, do, <laughs> they put the credits before they put the end title of the book, huh? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that is that is very odd. I didn't even. Catch well, no, there's that. the title of the book, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they also shot her in a costume, like yeah, like a costume, second, and didn't put. They that shot in. her. That's outrageous. <laughs> You, you know what no, I mean? No. They had her in for a photo shoot yeah. in the costume, and they've only really used it as the promotional thing on the um, website. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't in this. It should have cut to title, then credits. That's That was very odd. They what if? Credits, they did the title, and they still don't show you the book and stuff, for the fact that it's for book and stuff, until the very ass end. They do have her in the costume in this, also at the very ass end. There, for a there could be, a, there could be a, another cut, like of the trailer, like uh, the Hollywood corporations that is copying. They do that, don't they? Like uh, have released four trailers for the same movie with seven seconds of different footage in each one. Like, uh, well, to me, it it, it it speaks again to the business part that like Vaughn was talking about, where the people that made it are more important than the thing. It was like it was yeah. important that everybody see that the Saska sisters were credited three times. Uh, Eric July is credited three times, uh, and then a couple other people. I mean, maybe one other person. Yeah. And then the title of the book comes. Like, like the 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 name of the book is is unimportant, like in comparison to so you know who this was the made. Names by. on the book, yeah. Well, that's all, all of the, 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 the making of which is about ten minutes. It's just a fucking big circle jerk about how great they all are. That's all it is. It's it's them yes. telling you how hard they've been working, what we've been doing behind the scenes, how amazing Eric is to work for, and then you've they got call other Eric people. A genius. Coming. Yeah. Um, I, I want to yeah. be able to uh, interject here just for a second. Um, I know that we do have a panel member that might need to leave soon, and since we did get to the, I'm glad we were able to get to the end of the trailer. Um. Ryan, are, are, do you need to do you need to dip out here at any point, or are you... unfortunately, it is getting rather late for me. Unlike uh, Kami, I need sleep. But it was great to to interact with all you fine folks. It's great to see Kenzo again, cosplaying as Eric July. You naughty <laughs> naughty boy! Uh, it was great to to see Piper again. It had been a a, a while, as well as these two. Nope. Did it wrong? Shouldn't do that. As well as these two uh, great guys, I always, I always critique people for doing it wrong. So I these two great guys, uh, Billy the Ghost, but I like to call him Ghost because I can remember that. Okay, Monster. That's a new name. That'll be hard to remember. I'll call you V. So there we go. Oh yeah. Uh, hopefully <laughs> you you all enjoy the the rest of this. Uh, Jabba says, no? Jabba says, 45 year old men can't stay up too late on a Friday night. Yeah, it nonsense, was nonsense. Nonsense. Yeah, I'm 24. Was... And I'm not lying. June 22nd, 1999. When I was born, WCW was fucked. <laughs> there we go. There's a wrestling reference for you. Great, so, to, meet, uh, great to meet you, Ryan. Mm, great to meet Easy, you, Billy. Mate. And uh, Kenzo, you keep being yourself. <laughs> be great, Ryan. Be great. Bye for now, everyone. Enjoy the we rest of the win. show. Bye. That that Bye. literally sounded like the classic thing that, like, you know, like when you when you go to meet your like hero for the first time, they're like, "Hey, you keep being <laughs> yourself, kid. Stay in school. Don't do drugs." <sighs> Good night, Grandad. Uh, that's a rough twenty-four. Yeah, I don't believe that. I've been calling bullshit on that. 
I had a segue line, uh, but the chat moves so fast now, like, because, you know, I'm used to only 18 people watching. Like, uh, it's totally gone. Uh, I was going to talk about uh, the casting of Will Smith as I saw. Oh, that was it. I said about respect and it. Like, uh, and I was thinking to myself, uh, who's uh, an actor who's all about like uh, respect and family and all of those kind of things? And obviously, Whoa. Smith, right? Eh? Smith, like an yeah. alternate <laughs> suggestion uh, for this role. Why are you telling this? Man? Yeah, to see him get pushed around by a woman, he would be a perfect. <laughs> Perfect in this role. Uh-huh. I'm gonna see him get dropped on a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Ryan was excellent in news radio. Uh, Jabba says, "Communist Serena used to work in with 16 able people, as the rest of them are starving to death." <laughs> well, I thought if he's a retired superhero, you'd want an older gentleman. So, like, uh, KSS okay, so in the chat suggests Jonathan Majors. Like, uh, he could be uh, one to uh, get in on that Daily Wire movie sort of thing because he's super mega cancelled or whatever. And he, like, uh, that's not out of the range of possibility. Uh, Woodrow suggests Cat Williams, like, uh, mm. but that would be mm. too. Good, like um, yeah. It would. But no, that would be. I'm just, I just imagined him then. You know when people like uh, when Hollywood actors get a Marvel movie and they bulk up, like and Kumal Nanjiani is now like a tank man, like uh, instead of a little dude. Uh, I would imagine Cat Williams like all buff, like uh, and it was. Really I imagine it's kind of like when Carrot yeah. Head got all buff. That was freaky. Uh huh. Yeah. So if, if it was going to be a good movie, yeah, like Idris good. Elba as as Isom would be a mm. good choice. Retired, mm. retired superhero mm. kind of look. Mm-hmm. Bill Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Chris Chris Rock. Yeah. Oh, OJ Simpson would have been. Oh, no. <laughs> He's got the build for it, OJ Simpson. Does. Oh, no. <laughs> so we stick him with Bree for um, y- 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 Yaira. I think so. Like, uh, I don't think there's anyone better than mm. Brie Larson for the role. Like, uh, I like how generous you were with drawing her chest there. That That's actually how big it is in that image. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, Trace, edge. like uh, I couldn't believe it. It didn't feel, like, correct. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> actually having to draw, like, a bump. Yeah. We've got some more suggestions here in the chat, man. Like Woodrow <laughs> says R. Kelly. But I R. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I some can't fly, can he? Like uh so it can't be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <Jesus. laughs> Shaq, yeah, that's a good one. Hex Allen. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sean King of Isom, that's a great one man. <laughs> no, no, it would be a it, <laughs> in motto does have it right. Like I would love to see Eric July actually self insert himself for real and play Isom. Oh, that, would, that would just be all a, the waxing uh, it we would have to do to get that costume. There'd have to oh. be it'd be like having Tom Cruise on the set, you know, they'd have to Adjust the camera angles to make him look taller. And uh... oh man, that would be so great! Oh man, it's just uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Oh yeah, yeah. Once he got a uh, a note, uh, you know, he was meeting Prince or whatever, 
and got a note from Princess Handler's Lord saying, like, uh, and whatever you do, don't look Prince in the eyes. Uh, <laughs> and he gave them a note back saying to give to him to say, like, whatever you do, don't look weird out in the eyes. <laughs> 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 they were, what a power play. <laughs> Uh, where did I get to? Ah, uh, Forest Worker. <laughs> like, uh, might be too. Uh, Nobody said uh, Ryan Roslin. Yeah, that's true. They didn't. Um, who who played Xena Warrior Princess? Lucy um, Lawless. Yeah, Lucy she'd Lawless. be a, she'd be a good she'd be a good. Uh... Awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yaira. <laughs> yeah, Lucy Lawless is Yaira. That'd be good. She's Don Cheadle will come up. Uh, Terrence Howard would be a funnier, like, meta joke, like, uh, to get in this fictional, like, Daily Wire, Ripperverse Studios movie crossover. Leslie Jones is on Leslie Jones, Jones. <laughs> yeah, that's a banger. Uh, and Michelle Obama. <laughs> 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 that's a good one. I'm gonna put that in my notes. Uh, I did. Re we were so keen to get into the show that I didn't actually get through a couple of other notes that I did make. Uh, like another thing that I learned this week is, uh, so you know this sound, da -da like uh, you know yeah, what that sound Netflix, is? Netflix, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> I learned like the origin of that sound this week. Like, uh, does anyone know what that is? Like already, or is this new information? Mm -mm, I have no idea. No. Okay, so. You know the show House of Cards with notorious alleged paedophile Kevin Spacey as uh, alleged paedophile president? That's what you usually do. Um, so in that show, at the end or summer, like he becomes the president or something. I don't know. I didn't watch the show. Uh, and he puts on, there's like a scene. It's like a minute, two minutes long of him just like putting on a ring. And then he bangs his fist on the table and it goes dun dun like that. And then the end credits come up like, and that's the end. Like, uh, and they just stole it straight out. The... That's where that comes from. Uh, and then my final note I guess we're going to wrap it up. Like, uh, I mean, we could just talk for hours, but people have lives and stuff. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we could watch that making of, but it puts plus mm. one hour. Like, on the show, like, uh, <laughs> no, it's starting to sound like we're hating on them instead of just laughing at them, Mark. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Bridget Nielsen as Yara, so, <laughs> oh, these are still flying in, uh, yeah. So, in uh, Moses says, uh, I really like the Weird Al documentary movie, I watched that like, uh, in the last fortnight, uh, and it's quite funny, like, uh, it, it, it pains me to say it, but. Uh, I think that Daniel Radcliffe since Harry Potter, and I guess you could include Harry Potter, has just continued to make good career decisions. Like, uh, so good for him. Um, unlike the my final note that I should talk about this week is uh, I I overheard a conversation. Um, I'm like typing on the computer, and two people are talking behind me. And uh, one of them says, like, oh, and my mom was so excited. Like, uh, she was texting everyone saying, oh, my, I'm going to be a grandma again. Like, uh, my son's, uh, you know, um, he's text me saying uh, he's got some really important news. Like, he needs to come around to tell me all about it. Like, I'm, I'm so excited. Like, uh, you know, he's gonna, I'm going to be a grandma again. Uh, maybe he's gonna get married you know like uh, that kind of thing uh and then he turns up and he says oh i've only got six months to live uh and when she said that behind me like uh i just like blurted out laughing and it like uh because it's incredibly funny like to set, set it up like that like uh it, 
don't be disgusted. It's hilarious. Like, that's a funny sentence. Uh, you know, a lot of jokes work on this idea of, like, I'm leading you along this pathway and your natural pattern recognition knows the next step is going to be this, but ha-ha, it's a different thing. You're not having a baby. You're going to die. <laughs> uh, which seems like the perfect place to end it, Piper. Uh, oh, does anyone have anything that they want to um, say or show? Like, Vaughn, you got a book out at the moment? and not yeah, Bab. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's always a book, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm I'm running Kataru Witch Hunter on Indiegogo, fund my comic, and we just launched on Kickstarter. If you want to back there, so uh, it's uh, what is Dope. it? Sixty six pages of story, badass feudal Japan supernatural murder mystery sword. It's kind of Ninja Scroll meets Blade of the Immortal, kind of kind of kind of manga inspired, but it's still very me. It's very uh, dark and fun. Great great lines. Great great little story. One and done tale. And uh, you can get my art book and my work and my design work that I did really personal. It's kind of like tracks me from high school and drawing comics and designing characters all the way to now. And you will you get a lot of cool art, but you also get like into my design work, how I make comics, how I do my stuff. So it's it's got a lot of cool personal notes in it and stuff. It's kind of like a weird art diary almost, but design diary. So check that out. Check out Necrovanicon too. Thanks, man. And thanks for having me, Mark. It's been a pleasure. It's been too long. I want to come on again soon. And uh, thanks for the laughs. Everyone was awesome, and uh, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you're, you're more than welcome. Like, uh, <laughs> thanks for coming. Anyone else? But I'm, I'm going to give it to Piper to do the poem, and then we'll go out with this uh, death blow. Uh, anyone? No. No? Cool. Nope. Here you go, Piper. And the floor is yours. I'm not good at reading these as yet, so I'm sorry. It's not really stealing. It's a catchy anthem. Equal opportunity dunking. Actually defending a black man. What big thumbs you have. <laughs> <laughs> the government redefined extremism. If I'm just cool, no one will know. I just like to talk into it. Now they play music for them. An Indian combat robot. <laughs> It's not your fault, giant lady. Your 24-year-old eyesight. Powerfully pencil. Like a log jam. <laughs> I can imagine an elephant. We're talking low bars here. It's iconic since I'm a tractor. It's weird, not weeb. That's very racist. Why did she fly five feet? Sweet dreams are best served chilled. Look for the look. David Hogg trying to be Matthew McConaughey. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Be a death was me Blackface Jimmy Fallon for writing. Walking like Vince McMahon after suspiciously standing in place. Shoving people out the way. Oh, Lisa. So I got plenty of space. 
If you don't struggle to create, how can you rule the human race? Und zwar bei Herzab, und zwar bei Herzab, und zwar bei Herzab, Sweet Dreams Kill! Und zwar bei Herzab, und zwar bei Herzab, und zwar bei Herzab, Sweet Dreams Kill! Sweet Dreams Kill! I was here and I live. I was here and I live. You will get cut stone. You will take it like a home. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks for the heads up. Sweet dreams, chill. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks for the heads up. Sweet dreams, chill. Thanks for the heads up. Sweet dreams, chill. Thanks for the heads up. Sweet dreams, chill. You know it was good.